In this video we're going to look at how to construct a graph by hand. It's going to be a little bit awkward as I'm doing it on the computer, but bear with me and we'll see how we go. First thing we need is our table from the previous uh, video that has all our results in it. What we then want to do is label our axes. And in the previous video I mentioned that the independent variable goes across the bottom and the dependent variable goes up the side. So I'll label those axes now and I will include the units in brackets after the label. Now that we have our axes labelled, what we're going to do is work out the scale of our graph. Uh, previously I said that we want to avoid an awkward scale. And what we want to do is work out how it's going to fit onto the square. So we'll start off with our independent variable. And you can see that the independent variable goes from 20 to 60. So we need to have the values of 20 and 60 fit on our graph. So the first thing we could do is we could go, say each box here is 10. So 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60. Uh, and it would fit on the graph. However, you can see there that we would end up with only using a very small portion of the graph paper that we've got. Uh, so we'll make that scale a bit bigger. Uh, so we'll try have each box worth 5 degrees. So it'll be 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60. So now we're going out to here. Uh, so that's probably going to be a good scale. What I'll do now is, the problem with this point is for me to make it any bigger than this, I need to go three boxes equals 10 degrees, which makes each box 3.33 degrees, which makes it really, really hard once it starts to actually come plotting. It's an awkward amount. So I'll stick with that. Uh, each box worth 5 degrees. Now what I need to do is work out the same thing for my vertical axis. So you can see for our dependent variable we're going from 24 up to 56. So we need to get those in it. Uh, what I'll do is I'll try again for 5 degrees, uh, this time it's 5 seconds per box. 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, 35, 40, 45, 50, 55, 60, and we've got out it in, so we can fit it like that. Uh, and usually you just do that. Uh, what I'm going to do in this case is I'm going to actually bring that down uh, by 20 seconds. And the reason I'm going to do this is just to illustrate that you don't need to actually start at zero. So this point here doesn't need to be zero. It can be whatever you like. So I'm going to go 25, 30, 35, 40, etc. So I'll just label those now. Okay, and we've labeled our axis. And you can see that I've started with 20 here. Again, for no reason other than to illustrate the point that I can start wherever I want. I can start at zero, like I've done on this side. So 0, 5, 10, or however you want to do it. Now that we've got our axes labelled, we can actually start plotting our points. So we can see that the first one is a temperature of 20 degrees and a time of 56 seconds. Okay, so temperature 20, we get the line that's got 20 on it, and we follow that up to 56. So we know that this is going to be 60, and this is going to be 55. So 56 is somewhere around here, and we put an X there. The next one is 30 degrees, so we go over to 30 degrees, now we need to go up to 47 and a half, so it'll be above 45 and below 50 and about dead in the middle. The next one is 40 and 41, so we go from 40 up to 41. So this is 40, this is 45, so 41 will be about here. We've got 50 and 34, so 50 up to 30, so it'll be just below 35. And 
60 and 24. 60, 24, just below 25, about there. So we've plotted our points. The next thing we're going to do is to do a line of best fit. Now you see that I haven't actually joined the points that I've plotted. I'm going to put in a line of best fit. Now the thing about the line of best fit is you want to go through or close to as many of the points as you can. And you want to have about an even number above and below. Uh, so this is a little bit tricky and it's going to be particularly tricky for me on the computer. Uh, so I'll see how I go with that. Again, that's probably close to correct. Uh, so we've, you see we've got one, two below, two slightly above and one on the line. So probably about right. Uh, what we want, uh, the important thing to do here is that you're not extending the line of best fit out past the points that you actually have. So we're not going past 60 or below 20 because we don't want to assume that the whatever it is that we're plotting will follow the trend at those levels. Uh, now that we've got our line of best fit, and if you were actually doing this graph, these X's that I've made would be a bit thicker so that you could actually see them underneath the line because they get sort of washed out a little bit. Uh, so that's my fault. The last thing we're going to do before our graph is finished is give our graph a title. And what we need to do is give it a title that actually explains the data that's presented in the, ta in the graph. Uh, so we don't just want to call it graph of results, we want to actually have a full descriptive. Now that we've got a title, we have our axes labelled with units in brackets, we've got our scale, and we've plotted our points, our graph is done.